So, today being the day after Christmas, I felt that we should do something a little bit different in terms of DCS content. My squadron is currently on Christmas vacation, so we will not be flying tonight. So, I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the projects I never made in terms of single-player campaigns. And in this case, it is a campaign for the F5E Tiger that got so far ahead that not only did I write the backstory for it, but also made an entire first mission, and a lot of the second one as well. This campaign was very ambitious, uh, to say the least, and it focused around the two nations that were essentially Georgia, but if Georgia had not only remained independent, but also split into two nations, one being more Soviet-aligned and one being more Western-aligned. The story takes place during the Boxing Week. I think the work name I had for it was Boxing Week War. A little bit inspired by a Swedish novel by Lars Wildering called Midwinter Mörker, which features a war set between Christmas and New Year. And the entire idea was that the F5 didn't really have that kind of campaign, so I wanted to give it one. And the wrench in the work was partly the fact that I have a knack for diving into something and then just abruptly not finishing it. And also the fact that there was a payware F5E campaign released on the DCS store by, I can't remember the name right now, I think it was, actually, let me just Google that. The guy made an entire campaign about the F5, and he he deserves me actually mentioning his name, because I played it, and it's good. Uh, Sorelro, I don't know if I pronounced that cor correctly, but he made an F5 campaign, and, well, I played it. I liked it. Black Sea Resolve 79. If you want to play an F5E campaign, that campaign is comes highly recommended, and you should absolutely try it. And, um, yeah. So, now that there was a campaign, I decided that no. I didn't actually need to uh, make this anymore. I could focus on any of the other projects. And so I did. And when I sorted out my different campaign files, I realized that this project, didn't, it, it came really far ahead. I mean, I did reuse some voice lines that were recorded for Operation Varangian. And I also decided that I would use as much stock DCS footage as possible. Now, you will see the 2.7 clouds here, but the entire project predates 2.7 clouds. I just wanted to see how this mission that I'm very proud of would look with the 2.7 clouds. So I decided that, hey, I'm just gonna throw them in there and see what happens. So, the we're just gonna wait out some of the voice lines here, and I, then I'm gonna dwell into a little bit about the storyline of the campaign. Cold one stingray. Radar contact. Proceed on heading one nine one four sixty. Yeah, I hate it when I interrupt myself. Don't you hate that? So essentially, the story of the campaign is that you are actually the aggressor. It's not the red four that is going to attack you. Rather, this is. Yeah, as you probably inferred by that little bit voice line, uh, you are the aggressor. Your nation, I don't really recall what I called it, but I do remember that the Soviet counterpart was uh, essentially the free state of Poti and stuff like that, or something like that. 
And the entire point was that, hey, we're gonna have a Western uh, campaign where you are the aggressor and it's gonna be a very morally gray. The entire point was essentially that the war was unjustified or at least could have been solved diplomatically had they actually tried it. But no, they decided they didn't want to try it, so of course F5s and F86 Sabres would clash against MiG-21s and MiG-19s and MiG-15s. And this mission was v very ambitious in terms of what I wanted the AI to do. Because the entire strike force is to traverse this canyon. And the player's role in the mission is to destroy the aircraft on the ground. The other F-5s are going for the radar array. And the F-86 bombers are going to hit the port. And all the meanwhile you will also get voice lines from a uh, source on the ground that will tell you exactly what is happening, there is civilian traffic on the runway, the enemy are running towards their planes, meaning that you've been spotted, stuff like that. And, like I said, it was very ambitious to have the AI planes fly through this canyon, and more so to try and tell the player that they had to fly through this canyon, because there's no, not really any waypoint aids or anything like it to actually aid the player in that. But, there is a correct there's civilian traffic on the runway i repeat there's civilian traffic on the runway yeah so there were a corrective measure meaning that if you were to peek your head up from the canyon you would get shot down by sands so it was not unlike my other campaigns that tried to be intuitive um this one would have been fairly difficult from the get go and that was also the intention now, I'm not going to show you too much of this mission, because with the upcoming release of the Mirage F1, I have decided that this campaign is a prime candidate for replacement to be flown with the Mirage F1 instead. And here you can see how every unit in the Strike Force is lining up in the canyon and stuff like that. But yeah. This campaign is actually a prime candidate to be a Mirage F1 campaign. One, most of the assets are already in place. And uh, all I would have to do is replace some of the aircraft. Most likely I would make it more like a... Sparrow to call lead. Enemy personnel are rushing towards the airplanes. Yeah. Most likely I would make it so that... The friendly forces, the blue forces, flew, are flying French planes, fl French helicopters, stuff like that. And most likely the enemy force would fly F-5s, F-4s, more American planes. Because I feel like this red versus blue stuff, it's, it's fun, it's fun. But I also want to move past it. And, uh, yeah. I, ju I, I just feel like having different planes to shoot at is a good thing. So, another candidate to take over this campaign is of course the MB339, but I don't really feel it would fit with the jet plane feeling of the campaign. The MB339 is more like I want to make a, a coin campaign out of it, the counterinsurgency. Uh, very low intensity, maybe even like Georgia in the 1990s are buying the, the plane, but they had front foot, so why would they, I mean, I'm just thinking aloud here. So, when you arrive at Batumi, I don't know what that glitch was, I never had that graphical glitch before, and I never, I, I don't know if it's related to the weather or track AR, but I never had it. Either way, so here you can see how... Uh, all the assets are running in towards the airbase and one of the interesting things is that the, the fictional snow skin for the MiG-19 actually makes the plane rather difficult to spot on the ground and that is actually pretty funny because here you can see how I'm trying to find the aircraft on the ground and stuff like that so, yeah, this is the campaign that I essentially never, never did. 
And there goes the rockets, and we basically blow up one of the enemy aircraft with it. And we pass by, and then we are gonna go around and have another go with the guns. So yeah, you can probably write in the comment section about if you feel this, what you have seen would be a nice fit for the Mir uh, Mirage F1. Or if you have any other idea of an aircraft you want to see a campaign for. With uh, Blackbeard 2.7 out and you for EB files any day now. I would say that I'm looking for the next project to begin with. But I don't really know if I want to begin with a plane that hasn't been released yet. Because I don't know when it will be released. Uh, but anyway, it has been really nice to try and talk to you about this stuff that never really saw the light of day. But still might actually be seen at some point. So I hope you are well and I will see you around in the skies.